Hello, my name is Nick and I would like to introduce a series of videos about automation and configuration management tool called Ansible. Let's start with the agenda for the whole course. At first I want to emphasize an audience for which this course has been built. If you are a network engineer, network architect, or you want to start diving into NetOps, this is a good material for you. If you want to learn, to learn Ansible in order to deal with regular servers, virtual machines, containers, etc., it is still okay, since most concepts do not change. But I must warn you that there is a difference between using Ansible for managing network devices and using Ansible for managing Linux servers. And I will talk mostly about network stuff, but I will cover some details of that difference as well. We will start with Ansible overview and talk about uh, what it is, why do you need it and what features make Ansible unique. Next we will deal with Ansible workflow and learn what happens behind the scenes when you run Ansible playbook. After that we will take a look at Ansible architecture and learn what components make up Ansible. Then we will explore Jinja 2 templating language. Next we will learn how to use Ansible advanced features such as loops, conditions and other special operators. And finally, debugging is last but not least on our list. Of course, I will provide a lot of different hands-on examples. So let's move to our first topic, which is Ansible overview. So the first question which we need to ask ourselves when we want to learn a new skill or a new tool is what problem does it solve? Ansible helps us automate our routine tasks such as provisioning, configuring, maintaining and troubleshooting our infrastructure components. Let's take a look at an example. Imagine that you are a network engineer at some company and you have a pretty big network consisting of 3000 devices. Routers, switches, firewalls, load balancers, wireless access points, etc. If you do not have any automation tool or automation software, you will have to configure them, all of them, manually. And it means that you will have to SSH into each of these devices and do your job. Configure them, maintain them, troubleshoot them. If you want to add a new device, you need to provision it and so on. And I believe that at some point you will definitely hit your limit. You do not have enough time to do your job good. At that point, I believe that you have uh, two possible solutions. You can hire more people, expand your networking team and split all this load between them. But I think that there is a better way and this better way is to use some automation tool or automation software. In case of Ansible, you can install Ansible control machine develop Ansible playbooks and they will do all that boring stuff. SSH into each device and execute uh, CLI commands. Before we move forward, I want to mention one more time that Ansible can work with different platforms, different OSs, uh, different devices, not only networking devices. For example, if you have a WordPress application, which consists of three different tiers, database, which is our backend, frontend, which is web server, and load balancer. You can use Ansible to provision infrastructure, physical servers or virtual machines or AWS EC2 instances, whatever. You can provision infrastructure. Let's imagine that uh, we will use VMs. Next, you can use Ansible to install software. For example, install MySQL, Apache, Nginx. And after that, you can use Ansible to actually configure 
these components, this software, configure, database configure, Apache configure, load balancer. And uh, finally, at the end of the day, you can deploy your application from scratch, from nothing to running state when everything uh, is working. Now let's find out what makes Ansible unique. First key feature is its agentless architecture. Basically, the only thing you need on a device which you want to configure with Ansible is properly working SSH. From that perspective, Ansible is different from two other big players on this market, Chef and Puppet. But what's my... Uh, sorry. If you want to use uh, Chef or Puppet, you need uh, to install an agent on every device you wish to configure with them. Also, new network devices uh, give you such option. For example, new Cisco Nexus switches can accommodate Chef and Puppet engines, but vast majority of them doesn't allow you to install anything over the operating system and they do not have, uh, for example, any kind of API to interact with. For example, if you have classic old uh, Cisco router box which uh, runs Cisco iOS unfortunately you cannot install Chef or Puppet agent uh, on it and uh, the only solution to uh, automate such device uh, is to use uh, some tool which in turn use SSH. Next bullet is Ansible's simplicity. Ansible isn't the only possible way to automate your configuration tasks. You can try at least two different approaches. First is to write your own script or application, for example, using Python and Paramico library. Paramico is library, Python is prog programming language. And or if you really want to dig out a dinosaur, you can try TCL and expect. TCL is a program a programming language, expect is a tool for TCL. Disadvantages of this approach are relatively high complexity and time you need to learn, code, test and finally make use of it. Second option is to buy a solution out of the box. In many cases you can buy a software which does everything you want, but only for one vendor. Obviously purchasing automation software per vendor in multi-vendor environment is very expensive. Ansible has a huge number of different modules which interact with various types of platforms, OSs, vendors, etc. So Ansible solves this problem, solves uh, this problem as well. And finally, Ansible by default use push model, which allows you to start configuring or pushing config exactly when you want. Chef and Puppet, for example, defaults to pull model. Next, I want to give you two additional resources which I encourage you to use. First one is Ansible.com and it contains almost everything you need to learn and use uh, everything you need to learn uh, to use Ansible. Second is a book called Ansible Up and Running by these authors. And finally, I want to show you topology which uh, we will be using throughout this class. We have an Ansible control machine which is Debian 9. Next we have four Cisco iOS routers, which we will configure using Ansible control machine. So here we have router 1, router 2, router 3 and router 4. Also we have Linux Fedora machine, which we will use to denote differences between configuring network devices and regular server platforms. Here it is. 
You can see some IP addresses on the screen, but those details are not very important as long as we have IP connectivity between Ansible control machine and our targets. Targets in, in our case are routers and our Linux box. In our case, uh, OOB or out of band management cloud hides this routing complexity. So we really should not care how we SSH from that IP to that IPs or to our Linux box. If we can SSH, uh, that's basically all we need. On the right side of the screen, we see DMVPN cloud, uh, which we will be configuring using Ansible. IP addressing for underlay and overlay I will assign on the fly. Here I stop and I will see you in the next video. Please rate this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.